ships and planes of our Navy are complex and expensive, and they need the finest skills of modern engineering. Keeping everything working properly is the job of the artificers, the technicians of the Royal Navy. The artificer is really a technical manager with the challenge of operating and maintaining some of the most up-to-date and complex equipment in service with any country, anywhere. Whether specialised in electrical, marine or air engineering, they start their training as apprentices at HMS Fiskard, Cornwall. Fiskard is very like a technical college, but with uniforms. The main difference here is that an artificer apprentice learns his skills in far less time than a man in a similar course in industry. The normal course of 12 months in Fiskard is split into three terms, with roughly a third of this time spent on sport and general naval activities. We will rely on these men to act coolly and professionally in any situation. After all, they'll be part of an important team and able to make up their own minds about problems that they have to tackle. Are you right, Bart? Right now, where are you going? As well as the basic naval training, there's plenty of scope for all sports and pastimes. It's a busy course at Fiskard, but these apprentices are already on a good rate of pay, and there's time to relax and have fun. At the end of three terms, the apprentice leaves HMS Fiskard to specialise in electrical, air or marine engineering at an advanced second stage training establishment such as HMS Caledonia. HMS Caledonia, near Edinburgh on the Firth of Forth, is the training school for marine engineering artificers. These men will eventually work with some of the latest marine machinery in the world. Steam and gas turbines, nuclear powered plant and diesel engines. They're also in charge of refrigeration and water distilling plants air conditioning and hydraulic systems, and ship hull maintenance. Their job, in short, is to keep the ship floating and to keep it moving. An important aspect of training is relating theory to practice. Caledonia is fully equipped for the apprentice to get to know most of the actual machines he will meet on ships of the fleet. Somebody once said that you'll never learn a thing until you've tried it. A marine engineering artificer isn't an exception. He has to be fully trained and experienced before taking his place in the complex operation of a ship. The nine terms at HMS Caledonia give an apprentice the theory and practical training of any similar engineering course. The qualifications gained here are fully accepted by industry and the professional institutes, and it equips a man for a job of great variety and importance. With four years behind him, the artificer apprentice will leave here to join his first ship. It may be a guided missile destroyer, a submarine, or one of the new generation of gas turbine destroyers. Get on board the ship. 
and we'll sort it out. These three artificers have been assigned to the first chip of a brand new class being built at Southampton. Their job is to ensure that this ship will make Navy sense, that it will work to specification and be as easy as possible to maintain for the next 20 years. Right, you can see uh, the snag, they've raised that pipe from mid guard position to the top of the guard position, but we still can't get this 8 inch guard off. You know, it's cooling water. This is a typical example of what an artificer has been trained to do. If this essential pump needs repair, say a belt breaks, then another and even more essential system, the main air conditioning plant, has to be shut down to get at it. The designers haven't foreseen this vital snag. It needs the men who will actually be on board the ship at sea and in action to foresee these problems and get them straightened out. I know clever draftsman, but what I'd like to see done is this piece of pipe lengthened from 16 to 23 inches to bring it round right up to the ship's side, bring the same bend in, and then from the end of the valves come along yeah. until we meet that 8 inch pipe yeah. coming down behind the 6 inch salt water main that drops down below there. I think we were proposing on the second ship that we move the valves up and put them under the T. I'm not really worried about that as long as I get this out so I can move the guard. This team of artificers will stay with the ship right through her building time and take her out for her sea trials. By then, they know every inch of her. They have to. That's their job. For air engineering artificers, their training is at HMS Daedalus at Leon Solent, after Fiskard. There are 400 aircraft in the fleet air arm of more than 10 types. Apprentices learn their trade using most of the current machines operating from land and sea. There are three sections in air engineering and the apprentice can specialise in mechanical, electrical or radio work. The aircraft artificer is the mechanical engineer looking after aero engines and the complex hydraulic and pneumatic systems of both helicopters and fixed wing aircraft. As well as this, he must maintain airframes and be able to keep the aircraft available for service at all times and in all weathers. The air electrical artificer works on the electrical and electronic systems in naval aircraft, including automatic pilots, flying instruments and weapons. The air radio artificer looks after the radar, sonar and electronic navigational equipment that's such an important part of modern aircraft and their work. We need our aircraft in the Navy and we need them to fly reliably. These apprentices will be working with the new aircraft being designed now for the 1980s. Aircraft at sea have special problems. There's often not much room to work in, or not much time. It can be exciting work keeping them flying. Coast Guard Cal Shot, Coast Guard Cal Shot. This is Solent SAR calling for a radio check. Here we The aircraft of the search and rescue flight at Leon Solent have a vital job to do. These helicopters must be ready to scramble at a moment's notice, any time of the day, every day of the year. Part of the backup team is an artificer air apprentice in his final year of training. Each helicopter has to be checked and ready for immediate use. No machine is perfect, 
and he must be alert to the smallest signs of faults developing. Morning, sir. Morning, Chief. Did you find the fault on 12 last night? We finished about midnight, sir. Good, good. I'll just go and check the book. Yes, OK. Mm -hmm. The chief artificer runs the team, keeping each of the four helicopters under his care maintained to strict schedules. Mistakes could cost lives for the pilots and air crew, as well as the casualties they're called out to assist. Any slangs? No, not today, Chief. How about that nose door? No, it seems to have gone all right today. Good. So, that's the out. Car shot life, won't you? Four miles southeast of Portsmouth, yeah. Request hello assistance, just a moment. Injured Stephen for transfer to hospital. Roger, we're scrambling now. You did the aircraft to change from 810 to 812 and scrambling now. Okay, thank you. Anton SAR flight? Yes. Okay, thank you very much indeed. Right. We've got an in flight emergency on 812. We've got a serious road head snag, severe vibration. This is your sir, it's leaking. Last year, the Leon Solent flight flew 158 sorties and assisted 75 casualties, many with serious injuries. There has always been a helicopter ready for emergencies. The chief artificer and his team aim to keep it that way. That's fine, OK. Just gently let it go now. OK, Chief. We've just changed all three dampers. Um, if you'd like to come and look at the snag. The 
sills gone on the plan. With Fiskard behind them, apprentices of the electrical branch move on to HMS Collingwood. This is the Navy's electrical and weapons school. It's a large organization covering everything from soldering irons to computers. These apprentices will be in charge of the eyes and ears of the fleet. Electrical artificers work in three trades. These apprentices will look after radio and radar equipment and even satellite communication. Control electrical artificers work with submarine detection equipment, computers, gyro compasses and other navigational equipment. Finally, ordnance electrical artificers deal with all the electrical and hydraulic machinery including missile launchers, gun mountings and mechanisms, torpedoes. The power for everything on a ship. In the last ten years, advances in electronics have revolutionized ship running and even ship design. The electrical artificer has become a key man in the working of the modern defence systems in use in the fleet today. He has the first hand knowledge of the equipment, he can operate it, diagnose faults in it, maintain and repair it. In short, the electrical artificer has his finger on the pulse of the ship. Nuclear submarines, like this one, depend on electrical systems for their success and for their survival. A couple of chunk clips, sir. Two clips, two pins. There's one ship at Green 30 range, five miles. We'll pass yeah. two miles clear to start, sir. Yeah. Thank you, David. Ready to go, Dick. Ready to go, Dick. Have main vents. Have main vents. <laughs> right, diving now. Diving now. Diving now. Nuclear submarines can remain underwater for months at a time, so they need every system to work perfectly and for every man to know his job. There can be no room for errors. I'll be in my cabin. OK? Awesome. Oh, Seem to have lost indication on the drain, sir. Of course I'm down. OK, can you get hold of the 4 DM? Be steer on the top tape repeater and keep depth on the top depth gauge. Uh, what's the trouble? Uh, it looks like we've lost depth and course indication on the drain display. Uh, it looks like those channels have gone, sir. I think it's a job for the follow the end. OK, we're well, going to get hold of him. Yes, sir. Good trouble, sir. Yes, we have. Looks like we lost the course and depth input for the drain and they've gone. No, they have, not they? We've drawn depth only, please, and on course, and back to normal. Look, it all of a sudden, sir. Yes, I did. It went straight off to the left. I'll have a look in the control unit down here, sir. I think I'd better get out of your way. You continue to keep depth on the radio depth gauge and steer on the top take. It's the second and third from the end. Second and third? Yeah, that's it. Well, we'll change those two round and see if it shifts the spot. Yeah, that moves it down to the bottom right hand side. So that makes it that board there. Have you got the keys, Steve? Yeah, right, yeah. 3R19 should be 4.7k. That's okay. All right. 
3R18. That's OK. 3R9 should be 120 ohms. Yeah, no reading there. It looks like that one's it. 3R9, 120 ohms. It's a small one. 120 ohms, quarter watt. That looks better. Let me try it on depth. And on course. And back to normal. That's fine. It's working again now, sir. Fine. Is Everything OK? It's fine now, sir, yeah. Open circuit resistor in the gauge drive circuit. It's okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. This artificer is a chief petty officer at 23, and with only three years' service since completing his apprenticeship, has the full responsibility of one of the most complex systems of guidance electronics in the world. Yet he is not unique. All artificers, as the technical managers of the Navy, are the key specialists keeping everything working and working well. It's a good job with good pay and one of the finest apprenticeships you'll find anywhere. And there are opportunities to go further, to the highest ranks of the Navy. There are 4,000 artificers working in air, electrical and marine engineering with skills and qualifications as good as any in industry. Technicians, diagnosticians, troubleshooters, managers, they're all these things. Artificers are a vital part of a team that keeps the Navy on the move and at the ready. <laughs>